Well, you're most welcome to join me today here at Bolt Head. We're actually on Bolt Head, looking back towards Salcombe, and this was the uh, close by was uh, the former RAF Bolt Head. to supply them with everything they need for the purpose. The pilots of the Eagle Squadron have come from all parts of the Union to help us fight our battles. They are very good pilots, and I think we shall hear a lot of them in the future. They certainly form a link between the peoples of America and Britain, and they are certainly doing uh, their part in the immense effort which the American people are now putting up to help us win the war. The Eagle Fighter Squadron was officially formed towards the end of last year. Though American Air Volunteers had fought in the battles of France and Britain, a number having given their lives in our cause. Now the Eagle Squadron is on the job, fully trained and equipped. Fighting Americans in Hurricane Fighters, helping Britain with all they've got. Very, very dark day for uh, 133 Eagle Squadron. They arrived at Bolt Head with a mission to go and fly to Morlay. What ensued was a complete disaster. The squadron lost 11 of its 12 brand new Mark 9 Spitfires. And today I'm just gonna try and make a tribute to those very brave airmen in my very short film. And I really hope you find it of some interest and can stick around and see some of the detail. We're here at the uh, former RAF bolt head and we're right in the centre of the uh, main runway. This is looking east and then as we uh, turn around we'll have a look at the uh, westerly uh, aspect and the main runway ran directly up through here. Now this is really to set the scene for an event um, or a mission that took place here on the uh, 23rd of September 1942 and it was the um, 133 squadron, the Eagle squadron, that um, refuel and have a briefing and get ready for uh, the mission which was across in northern France, which on the face of it was a fairly straightforward mission, but the briefing was very hurried, um, it wasn't complete, um, and so uh, when the pilots came to take off, uh, th there was quite a bit of confusion. They uh, circled overhead at 2,000 feet before they headed across the channel. After three Spitfire squadrons, 133 Eagle Squadron had just received their brand new Mark 9 Spitfires and uh, the other two squadrons involved were um, 401 Squadron, they were the Royal Canadian Air Force, and 64 Squadron which was um, headed up by uh, Squadron Leader Gaze. 133 Squadron took off. Uh, Flight Lieutenant um, Gordon Brattel was the uh, was the, the wing leader of that uh, squadron and uh, he, he had a puncher as he was taxiing out to take off and had to make a quick swap into another uh, another Spitfire. This I think and uh, combined with problems with the uh, radio transmitters and the radio frequency um, there generally was a fair bit of confusion at the start um, but nevertheless they they got uh, overhead 2,000 feet and then set off across the channel in the direction of Morlay to try and catch up and meet the uh, squadron of flying fortresses that they were going to offer uh, top cover to. Across channel, the uh, weather wasn't as uh, was forecast, so they had to climb up above the cloud. Uh, they were up at 25,000 feet um, to get clear of cloud, and um, unbeknown to them, the uh, they were experiencing uh, extreme tailwinds of 100 miles an hour, um, which was um, far higher than the 35 miles an hour that was forecast. So their timings were completely out, and um, they obviously arrived over northern France um, completely in disarray. And um, 
12 um, Spitfires took off from uh, RAF Bolt's head for, um, with uh, 133 Squadron. Um, one of them um, experienced some uh, problems en route and had to return, but um, they carried on and uh, they were above cloud over northern France and um, unable to identify their... Um, uh, their, their squadron of fortresses and also unable to pinpoint their exact position now bolt head is a, probably only about 80 miles away so they were struggling to pinpoint their position over northern france and so um they elected to come down through a gap in the cloud and uh unbeknown to them as they came down to this gap they thought they were over southern England but in fact they were over the northern coast of France at Brest which was one of the most heavily defended areas of occupied France at the time so as the 11 Spitfires came down through the cloud um, they were immediately attacked by heavy flak and then obviously the uh, Germans launched their um, fighters to come and attack them as well and uh, many of them were lost. Chewing uh, confusion and attacks coming up from uh, the German flak down below um, flight uh, Lieutenant uh, Pratel uh, was hit by flak. His aircraft, uh, it's the wing split off, and uh, he just had to. He, he basically just crashed. Uh, had to force land, um, and uh, he was severely injured, but managed to crawl out of the wreckage. Um, he was taken POW, um, and then um, eventually he went to uh, Stalag Luft Three, where he took part in the Great Escape and unfortunately he was uh, recaptured and then he became one of the 50 RAF officers that were executed on the uh, orders of uh, Adolf Hitler. Um, a list here of uh, some of the uh, pilots that um, took part in the uh, in, in this particular mission and um, try and detail what uh, what happened to them. Four of the uh, American uh, Eagle Squadron pilots were killed um, straight away and um, a combination of the rest of them, uh, they they either bailed out, force landed, but in any event, uh, 11 of the 12 Spitfires, the 12 brand new Mark 9 Spitfires were lost, so 11 of them were com complete losses. The uh, pilots that were lost, so Flight Lieutenant Edward Gordon Brittell, DFC, um, he, he, he crash landed and he was taken uh, as a POW and sadly later as part of the Great Escape he was murdered by the Gestapo and then um, Lieutenant George Brooks Sperry um, he became a um, POW because uh, his aircraft ran out of fuel and crashed near Morlaix, France then there was uh, a Captain Charles Albert Cook and he was lost in the uh, Brest area for unknown reasons. Uh, there was pilot officer Dennis David Smith, um, age 22. He was killed. He ran out of fuel and crashed near Morley, France, and he's buried there. Uh, there was a second lieutenant, Gilbert Graham Wright, age 24, who became a POW. He also had ran out of fuel and crashed near Morley. There was a pilot officer, Gene Parks Neville, age 24, and he was killed. He'd crashed at Ging Camp, some 80 kilometres west of St. Malo, uh, from flak damage. There was a pilot officer, Leonard Thomas Ryerson, age 31. He was killed. He ran out of fuel and crashed near Morley in France as well. There was a Captain Marlon Elmo Jackson, and he became a POW. He was lost near Morlaix um, for unknown reasons, but crashed there. Then there was a, um, a Lieutenant George Middleton, and he became a POW, and he was lost near Morlaix. Again, possibly shot down, but not, not exactly known what happened to his aircraft. And then there was pilot officer William Henry Baker, DFC, age 22 and he was lost near Morlaix um, and was killed and uh, he's remembered on the tablets of missing Cambridge uh, the Cambridge American Cemetery so it, all in all it was an extremely sad day well, um, 
squadron leader Tony Gaze of um, 64 Squadron, who was the overall commander, he was actually, unfortunately, uh, he was made a scapegoat for the whole mission, and uh, he was demoted back down to a flight lieutenant. He did serve out the rest of the war on operational duty, and then uh, after the uh, end of uh, hostilities, he re- returned to Australia and actually became uh, quite a successful Grand Prix driver some interest but um i appreciate that uh it's it's rather short but i've tried to pack in as much detail as i can and uh, i hope you uh, take the greatest care and look forward to seeing you on the next one all the very best cheers for now (laughs) 